what's up ladies welcome back to the channel so as you can tell by the caption of the video we are going to be doing a freestyle full set so before we get into the tutorial make sure to comment like and subscribe make sure you go check me out on all my social medias and make sure to leave me a comment of what video i should do next i know i always say that on all my videos you guys but honestly i don't feel like i get i get a lot of views like a decent amount of views for me to just have started but i don't feel like i get a lot of comments or like a lot of feedback you know as far as what videos you guys would want to see me do or like sets you would want to see me do or you know just anything of that sort i don't really ever get any recommendations so please give me some recommendations so i can maybe you know spice my channel up a little bit and not always just do nail tutorials i don't know but it would be really appreciated so yeah anyways um like i said we are doing a freestyle full set so i am going ahead and prepping the nails for the acrylic application now of course i always push my cuticles back um i don't know if you guys noticed but i do have a different background and i do have a different cuticle pusher so i think actually my last video um, was my first video that I did in my new salon. So maybe I'll do a salon tour. Hmm. My new salon tour. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. But anyways, so um, I lied. This video isn't my first video in my new salon. I thought it was, but it's my second. So, you know, whatever. Anyways, um, yes, I finally got a new cuticle pusher. I just really liked the way my other one worked i know it sounds so silly because it's like all cuticle pushers do the same but i don't know you guys i just really liked it that one but i finally decided to let it go so yeah um and of course i went um around the cuticles with my cone drill bit and i got all of that dead nail dead skin cells anything that is under there anything that's on under the cuticle old cuticle all that stuff that needs to come out and be removed and then of course it also helps expose the entire nail um so then i went back over with my sanding band i think it was i think the pink ones which are new by the way are an 80 grit so i'm still kind of although my last ones were 80 grit i don't really know what it is about the pink ones that i I kind of like them. I kind of don't. Maybe I'm just getting used to them. I don't know. But there's something up about them. I'll figure it out and let you guys know if I continue to use them or not. But anyway, so I took that and I went around the whole entire nail, the natural nail. And this just eliminates the natural oils that our nails produce. And this is really important because if we leave those natural oils on and do not, you know, strip the nail of all of those when you apply your nail tip and then go on to the acrylic application part you will get lifting for sure the cuticle i mean not the cuticle <laughs> the natural oils of your nail believe it or not break down the adhesion of the acrylic way faster than it i mean if you get rid of that you will not really have to worry about any lifting as long as everything else is done properly until of course the nails get old so um that's a really important step and then of course you've seen i went ahead and applied the nail tips and cut them down to the desired length and here i am shaping them we're keeping that nice tapered square so of course you know i always say if you watch my videos to file the sides as you see i'm doing now at a 90 degree angle make sure that the file is pressed straight up against the side walls of the nails to get that nice crisp shape and then the free edge of the nail which is what i'm filing now you want to just take the back of the file and file straight up and down at a 90 degree angle as well make sure that you are turning the hand and looking at it from different angles as you've seen i did um just a few minutes ago and that just helps make sure that the nails are filed and straight from all angles and not just one um i know i say this in a lot of videos but i just like to make i like to touch on that because a lot of people just you know go about their work strictly from the view of how they're doing the nails rather than you know switching it up looking at it from this angle that angle and that sometimes is a bad thing because you don't get to see you know if there's any imperfections anywhere else so um, i definitely always recommend doing that and then so now i'm taking that same sanding band 
and I am blending the tips in with the natural nail so you do not want to use too much pressure on this it's just a really quick simple step and this just helps the application um, be a lot smoother as well as helps prevent lifting and then this next step is kind of optional um, as you see I'm taking that sanding band and I'm filing the whole entire nail tip and like I said that is optional I do that because I feel like it helps the adhesion of the acrylic way better um, you don't have to do that but you know maybe give it a try and see how you like it I started doing it um, about a few years ago and I've just done it ever since and I just it's just something about it um, so one step that I don't usually ever film is clipping the cuticles but I did do um, I did go ahead and clip the, her cuticles and then I applied my Mia secret dehydrator which just strips the nails one more time of any extra natural oils that she um, may at your client may have even after filing it with the sanding band and then I went in with my young nails protein bond which helps with the adhesion of the acrylic so yes that's the prep um i do have a very detailed video on prep i probably need to do an updated one but it's actually my very first video that is on my page if you you know feel like you're struggling with lifting or breaking anything like that definitely definitely go check out that video because it is very detailed um and helps with that so yeah this first finger we're going to be in like a marbled ombre so as you can see this theme of this set is purple so to start with um the marble i always take the well not always but most of the time i take the lighter color acrylic that we're using or one of the lighter colors and i uh, make sure that the bead is more on the wet side and then i just go in with um I mean, if you're using two colors like I am in this instance, then I'll go in with a dark color. If you're using more than one color, I kind of just like to go, if I'm going from dark to light or light to dark, I just do, you know, light to dark, dark to light, whatever, which way I'm going. Sometimes I do like to switch it up and see, um, you know, which one, if it looks better when I do light first, then dark or vice versa. So, um, yeah, anyways, whatever. Um, like in this instance, I'm using purple and white, so I went in with the light color, and then with a wet bead of my second color, I just went in and literally mixed it, you guys. Now, the biggest step in this, um, in, a, in the marble is making sure that you do not, like, use too much pressure, because then you're just going to smear it all off, or it won't really be marbled, it'll just literally be mixing the colors and then your brush will also get super super dirty and clogged so you just want to kind of you know very wetly literally mix the well not really mix but like drag the acrylics around and you can feel free to go in and add more of one color or another if you feel like you need it because as you've seen i definitely did on the corner so um yeah don't be afraid to do that so i'm going to leave it there i did ombre it up until well, I guess I should say I applied it up until the point where I want to do the ombre. So um, now I'm just going in this nail for as far as acrylic application. It's just going to be a solid purple. So as you see, I'm starting from the bottom, working my way up to the cuticle, and I'm just working with medium-sized beads. Now, if you watch my videos a lot, you know that I normally say three or four beads um, will get the job done. But I always tell you to, you know take that with a grain of salt because you may have to use more you may have to use less you know it really just depends but that's just like a starter I guess that I like to tell um people but as you can see in this case I used more than four beads her nails were longer and the color over the camera it looks very pigmented but it, I mean it wasn't bad at all I love this acrylic I would definitely use it again um but I just feel like I needed to kind of work with more medium sized beads rather than less larger beads. And I just feel that way because I feel like the more beads I used, the better the color kind of set and showed up if that makes sense. So that's why I did, did it that way. Um, as you can see with the cuticle bead, um, you do not want to place the acrylic right on top of the cuticle because then the cuticle will flood all your acrylic you know will be flooding over into your onto your skin into your up past your cuticle and that is a hundred percent 
going to cause lifting. So when you are patting your acrylic down, because that's what you do, when, especially when doing a nail like this, you just want to feather it. Lightly pat it, lightly feather it, you know, don't press too hard, um, don't really pull or drag, you just want to feather it, that way you're not pulling too much acrylic off. But, back to the cuticle part, when you are doing that feathering, your acrylic does slightly push up a little bit, so when you place it a little under the cuticle, as you start to feather that down, it will um, push up, I guess I should say, you know, for the most part, as much as you need it to. Um, another tip, as you'll see, I do on every single nail in every single video, I never miss a step, is constantly make sure that you're wiping the sides of the nail um, as well as the free edge because that will keep your acrylic application super, super neat and super, super clean, you guys. It's better to work smarter and not harder. This will save so much time, literally. Um, you know, come the end when I do the cleaning up of the shaping and I do my e-file, it literally, I can knock that out in about 10 minutes. And I'm not saying that to, you know, make you feel like you have to be in a rush. I'm just letting you know that it does save you time and it does help to work smarter, not harder. Cleaner and neater during the application process will save you so much time. As well as um, wiping around the cuticle area um, as you see I will do on every finger I just did it on this finger and that is just um, really important because it, like I said it does help prevent you know nobody is perfect sometimes I have acrylic that may flood over onto the cuticles and that's okay it's no big deal but it is a big deal if you wait to fix it until later down the road or while the acrylic is no longer wet when the acrylic is wet, you can just simply clean the cuticle and wipe any excess off. But once that sets and once that dries, you're in a whole nother ball game. So I just recommend to constantly get into the habit of cleaning the cuticles, cleaning the cuticle area, side, side walls of the nails. Just get into that habit and you will start to really see a difference as far as um, saving time, the the applicate the cleanliness of the application the sharpness like everything you will definitely see improvement um in that area just overall with everything so i definitely recommend getting into the habit of that um so for the ombre part of this nail it literally wasn't um anything too hard i just went in with this light pink color that i liked to use it's by sugar and cream but i cannot remember the color the name of the color but um, as you do with any other ombre, you just simply place the first bead or have me, you know, might be the second bead, whatever. You just place your first bead slightly above where you left off with your other color and then just pat it down. And you do kind of want to work with a wetter bead, not super wet, but not nowhere near dry, just because you want the acrylics to be able to mix. And then I did um, go in with clear just to cap it. I always like to do that with most of my ombres. Um, Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's optional, especially if you already have everything, like your apex and everything built up. If your foundation is there, you don't really need it. It's optional for sure. I just, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It's a force to have it. So with this nail, we're going to be doing like an ombre um, purple foil type of look. So I've used this, um, the product that you'll see me place on the nail. I have used this once before in a previous video. I'm not exactly sure what to call it because like I said, I guess it's called foil, but it's the texture of it is really different. It's really um, much more thin and flaky, I guess. It's more like flakes, so I guess I should call it purple flakes. So um, I did get these off of Amazon. I love them. They are so, so easy to work with you guys and the color is so great. It doesn't matter if I'm encapsulating it it doesn't matter if i'm putting it on just one nail like literally you guys it's just perfect even if i'm putting it over top and just putting clear coat over it it is so easy to work with and i love it so much and the color just really stays um you know every time so yeah i'm just literally as you can see i'm just um dipping my brush in the monomer and just picking it up as i go um it's kind of, I'm kind of trying to give like a little scattered glitterish look. So um, I'm just kind of putting it, putting more where I want more and less where I want less. And it is really easy to 
spread this stuff out. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, it's just so easy to work with. Now, of course, since these are flakes, um, I do recommend encapsulating it. That way, in the end, you just have to worry about, you know, of course, after filing, just putting the clear coat on. Now, with um, stuff like this, you just want to make sure that everything is covered. Um, so you don't want to work with way too much acrylic, but you don't want to work. I mean, of course, like I said, you have to make sure that everything's covered. So you do want to work with enough. Um, I just like to build my way up from top to bottom most of the time when I'm doing encapsulations like this one because it just lets me know that not only is my foundation and my apex there but all of my design is covered up and ready to go for the fi the e-filing that way I don't have to worry about anything getting you know filed off or chipped out like anything like that so um, this is a really simple step it's nothing really major to it so I'm just going in, yeah, with that clear acrylic. And I am, the clear acrylic gives me a secret, by the way. I will never use another clear. If I do, um, I will be sure to let you guys know that. But I've been doing nails for quite a while and I've never used another clear besides me a secret. So, um, yeah. And the white is also me a secret, um, which I'm not a big fan of white, regardless of what brand I use. Comment down below if you feel like white acrylics are kind of hard to work with. I know a lot of nail techs say that they are, like they're just really chalky, um, which I definitely, definitely agree. And I feel like no matter what brand I use, I have the same issues. So, um, yeah, I mean, of course, if you mix it with a little clear, that is like a mini hack that you can do to kind of make it easier to work with. But, you know, you don't always have time to do that. Or you don't might not always feel like doing that. I know I don't. I'm gonna be honest. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this nail. You know, it's encapsulated. It's ready to go. Um, and always remember, ladies, your apex is the most important part. As you can see, I kind of had to go back and brush some of that acrylic down because I didn't want it to be too thick in that area. But I um, that was the main area that I was focused on. 99% of the time if the nail is going to break it is going to be at the apex because that is where the nail is being held on from the root which is when you glue the nail tip down that's the root and the acrylic is like the water of the plant the watering of the plant you know what I mean so that might have been a bad you know little comparison but whatever so as you can see, this is going to be another marble nail. So I'm just doing the same steps that I mentioned um, for the pinky nail. I'm just taking the lighter acrylic. Um, like I said, make sure that the bead is more on the wet side because it makes it easier to mix in marble. And once it's dry, you guys, it becomes so much harder to work with, as does any acrylic. So I just could not imagine being midway through a marble nail and the acrylic being dried and lumpy. That would suck. So yeah, um, taking the purple and just plopping it right on top of the white, mixing it with the corner of my brush. And like I said, if you feel like you need more in one spot or, you know, of one color or the other color, just definitely don't be scared to add it because it's easier to just do it while it's wet rather than after it dries. Once you try, I've noticed once you try to go back over top of marble and do more marble, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. So yeah. Um, as you can see, like I had a little bit too much white right there. So I just went in with a little purple, a little white before it dried and fixed it up. And it came out looking exactly how I wanted it to. So I am going to go in and encapsulate this nail. Same steps as um, any other time I encapsulate something. Like I always tell you guys, it's optional. You kind of have to just base it off of if you feel like you need it or not. Technically, in this case, I didn't need it, but I just felt like i wanted to add that extra layer just in case i know sometimes i've done marble nails and then i'll go in with my e-file and i don't know maybe i'm mistaken or maybe i'm just tripping but i really feel like sometimes the file like will mess my marble up i feel like it might take too much of one color off or i don't know i just feel like i would rather be safe than sorry so yeah i'm just working my up from top to bottom again with the clear acrylic encapsulating it same steps nothing too special um and since i already did most of my uh foundation most of my application was the marble i'm not going in with too much clear because i don't want the nail to be you know big and fat 
because it's just going to leave me with, you know, having to file most of it off anyways in the end. And like I always say, you guys, work smarter, not harder. So I'm just putting what I need um, to protect that marble from getting filed off in the end. And then I'm just going back in and kind of brushing that acrylic down, cleaning off the side to make me sure that the application is nice and neat, like I always say. And then um, definitely make sure that you're, like I said, brush around the cuticles, especially with clear, because that clear can sometimes be tricky, y'all. I'm not even gonna lie. There's been a lot of times, especially when I first started, that I would encapsulate something. And obviously when working with clear, you can't see much. Um, so it would like kind of seep over onto the cuticle or onto the skin and I wouldn't catch it until the end and I would be so freaking annoyed but um, you know that's why I said get into the habit of just cleaning it anyways even if there's nothing right there just wiping around the cuticles and cleaning up the sides of the nails anyways that way you know for a fact whether there's something on there that you can't see that you can't see whatever the case may be it's clean and ready to go so um, this nail, as far as acrylic application, is just going to be another plain purple nail. So I'm going to do the same thing, work my way up from free edge to cuticle, applying that acrylic. Um, don't mind my client, you guys. We were just reminiscing about all the nail sets that I've done on her because she has been a day one client. Um, so it's just crazy how many sets that we've done on her. And every single one was like a freestyle, believe it or not. So that's crazy. But yeah, you guys, there's not really much um, to this nail right here. So I'm going to let you finish off watching me apply the rest of the acrylic. And I'm going to jump back in once I start to file and continue the tutorial. you guys the application looks so flawless so beautiful so now i'm just going back in with my file this is an 80 grit file as well as my sanding band so i'm just going back in to clean up the shape and since the application was super neat super smooth i don't have to really do much i'm just going back in to you know sharpen it up and just get out any imperfections if any so you want to make sure especially if you're using a sharp file like i am that you're pulling back your client's skin because the file you know one wrong swipe and you will cut your client and it will cut deep and it literally is the most uncomfortable grossest feeling ever you guys i actually did it on myself a few times when i was doing my own nails and i hated it Ugh, just makes me cringe thinking about it um and it's super freaking painful like it's so bad you guys i don't know if you've ever you know had that happen to you but you don't want to dive into your clients so make sure you're pulling those um you know the clients skin back before you file the edges and um we're doing the same exact steps here that we did when we filed the nail tips in the prep phase 
same um, you know filing the free edge and the sides of the nails at a 90 degree angle still flipping that hand looking at it from different angles to make sure that everything is nice and even nice and straight the one thing that we are doing a little bit differently is filing underneath the sides of the nails and you want to do that because after filing um, the nail tip in the beginning and applying that acrylic you do sometimes get like excess nail um, or like just you know a few rat rigid edges um, some acrylic they may have gotten under there like just anything there's a lot of there a lot has happened since we last filed these you know so you just want to make sure that everything is nice and clean and straight um, underneath those nails as well as on the top I know it might seem like well it's underneath why does it matter but I promise you you will see the difference and it's not pretty when you you know turn those beautiful nails upside down and you see a whole bunch of jagged edges so yeah so now we're just going in with the e-file sanding band and we are doing two steps we're going to seal the cuticles which helps prevent lifting and gets the nail into a shape where why not a shape but gets the nail into a spot where when the new growth does start to grow out that acrylic will be where it needs to be and only where it needs to be that way you can continue to do fill-ins if you need to um, and even if you're not doing the fill-in just overall your client's nail will grow out how it should and the acrylic um, that you just laid here on this set will be nice and even and no lifting you know anything like that so the second thing we're doing in this step is also um, at the same time basically is filing the nail down and making sure that everything is nice and smooth now you might not have to do much filing here as you can see i am chomping through this um, because i made sure that i kept everything super clean and neat so i'm just going over it just in case you know just to give it one nice smooth surface um, and this is really important because you will see lumps and you will see bumps you don't want to file too much because you will see dents you don't want to not file enough because it will be like i said lumpy and bumpy so you just want to make sure that you're you know left to right top to bottom feeling over top the nail making sure that it's smooth going back in if you need to you know take your time on the step because the next part is you know th the design and you're going to see everything from here on out so um, this part is super simple you're just going to take your buffer and buff all of the nails this is important because it helps get any scratches or anything that may have you know happened from that e-file it's going to buff it out smooth it out and make it ready for this phase which is the design phase one of my favorites so um a lot of these nails are just going to be bling nails so what I like to do um, if I'm not applying a full finger bling is put the top coat on first and I'm using McCart uh, gel no wipe top coat and I do that because um, when using I use the McCart rhinestone glue which is very thick and it's very um, thick is the best way for me to describe it so if I'm not using um, a full finger because as you can see this one is a full finger and I'm using my brush to smooth it out um, but if I'm not doing a full finger I like to apply the top coat first and then go back in and apply the um, rhinestone glue and I do that because with it being so thick however I apply it is how it's going to dry most of the time so if I just put a big glob on the nail and then let it dry and then come back into the top coat you're definitely going to see that blob it just makes it so much thicker um i don't know you guys i used to not do it that way and then i just hated the fact that after you know applying the jewels and then putting the clear coat on letting it dry i hated that you would look at the nails and see oh that's where the rhinestone glue is i know that might sound backwards like well won't you see it when the you know at, since you're putting it over top the top coat i don't and I don't ever see, like I'm not able to point out, oh, that's where the rhinestone glue is. So I don't know, you guys, it just has worked so much better for me. Um, and it does look way nicer. I don't know. To each his own, you might not want to do it that way, but it's fine. So in this case, and since it's going to be a full bling finger, I did go ahead and just cover the whole entire nail on that McCart rhinestone glue. I went ahead and smoothed it out and I'm just going to be applying um, some rhinestones. I kind of, like I said, this was a freestyle, so I didn't have a set rhinestone pattern. I just went in and put 
things, you know, wherever, picked up some jewels we liked and, you know, did my thing. So I am using a very old dotting tool. I'm um, just kind of tapping that in the McCart rhinestone glue and I'm using that to pick up the jewels and place them. And then for the larger jewels, I do have these um, tweezers, which you, nine times out of 10, if you've ever ordered jewels off of Amazon, um, they usually come with this, with these tweezers, but um, I know I have like literally 12 pairs. So yeah, um, but the rest of the nails are just going to be bling here on the thumb. I'm just going in and um, placing bigger bead or not bigger beads i'm still thinking of the acrylic application you guys because it's just my favorite part um no i'm just kidding but um bigger stones so i know that i just told you that i normally um put the clear coat on first in this instance since the stones are bigger at 100 percent um well maybe i should say 97 because nothing's really ever 100 percent right so like 97 percent um it covers 97% of that rhinestone glue so it's not really there won't be anything really poking out or you know hiding at us when we go back in to put the clear coat on it'll you know I'm, I'll be able to apply that and it will match and look super nice um so I went ahead and just put my one little bling on that pinky and I am going to go ahead and put the clear coat on these two nails before I add the rhinestones and um in between I am letting the nails dry um mostly after each of the nails where i put the clear coat on obviously before the rhinestones and also um like when i'm applying more than one rhinestone and i do this because with that the stone glue being so thick i have noticed that the stones will run and they'll slide off and i'm constantly constantly having to fix them so it's easier to just pop them out of that dryer real quick with this glue you can put it under for literally 10 seconds and it'll dry in place enough for you to come back and work on the nails some more so that's what I do and then of course once I'm putting the top coat in on, on the end or whatever the case may be they do get their full you know 60 seconds and more by the time I've done switched them back and forth so you don't have to worry about that so yeah um, I just did a little you know freestyle thing there with some jewels and I believe I just put one here so um, it was a pretty simple set but it turned out crazy so yeah this is the final result i love these so much the purples go together so good you guys i'm obsessed i hope you like them as much as i do make sure to comment like and subscribe and thank you again for all of your continued support i love you guys and until next time